coming at you early this week with the 62nd ever BC's Pro Wrestling Amplify podcast, the only podcast in the community that truly matters. And why are we coming at you a couple of days early this week? Well, my friends, at the conclusion of this recording, I have a little bit of traveling to do to another state, and that is the state of depression. (laughs) I'm joking, guys. I'm doing all right, and I hope you are too. I know it's been a rough, not just several weeks, but several months for all of us with no real end in sight with what's happening in the world. And I know that by the day, uh, people's mental health is just being screwed with and millions of people around the world don't know how they're going to put food on the table tonight, tomorrow, and going forward. Millions of people around the world don't know how they're going to pay their next set of bills Millions of people around the world, by the day, mentally, are just being destroyed. Even physically, too, by the way. Being cooped up like this is not good for anybody. It's just odd. What started out as all of us coming together to try to confine one beast has created so many other monsters in the process. And at some point, it's going to reach a breaking point where we have to make drastic changes and decisions. It might not make everybody happy. We're all on board in this fight to try to stop what is happening in the world. There's no question. Nobody denies that this is really bad. And nobody denies that drastic measures needed to be taken. However... When you start to see a million other issues arise, when you start seeing lives destroyed in so many other capacities, at what point do we stop and say, this one thing cannot be more important than a million other things? That is also taking thousands upon thousands of lives. Just a little bit of food for thought as we kick off this week's podcast. I do have to take care of some things over the next couple of days. So this is most likely going to be the last recording until Saturday morning's SmackDown review and reaction recording. So that's why you're getting this a few days early, guys. I wanted to at least make sure you guys had a podcast for the rest of the week to enjoy. And today's main topic, you guessed it, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. He's been digging his holes for years now. It appears that he has dug one a little bit too deep, and he might not be able to get out of it now. We might be talking about new owners of WWE. Within the next couple of months, guys, I wouldn't even be shocked if it was in one month's time. If McMahon is forced to sell, especially with all of these new lawsuits coming at Vince McMahon from every angle, we're going to talk all about it. That's the main topic in today's vid. Vincent Kennedy McMahon's stupidity, ignorance, and lack of common sense. A once genius turned idiot. But before we get to that main topic, I want to touch up on a couple of other topics rather quickly. First, this week's Raw rating, the lowest non-holiday rating ever in the show's history at a 1.82. I'm not shocked. Number one, the show has sucked for the better part of 10 fucking years. Even though I feel there have been signs of improvement as of late, that doesn't negate the fact that the show has sucked for the better part of 10 fucking years. It'll take a long time for many people to give that company another chance when they've been burned So many times. Number two. We're all locked down like animals about to be put out to pasture. On the surface, you'd say because people are stuck inside and not much to do, more people should be watching. And maybe you'd be correct if this was the first or second week of this lockdown. For instance, the first week of lockdown, Ross scored a 2.335. But after two fucking months of prison time... Because I assure you, that's what this is, and I've been to actual prison, and the longest lockdown I've ever encountered in prison was three days. Aside from that, commissary was always open, church services were always open, shop classes were always open, I could do more in prison than I can do today, during this lockdown. And the best part is, I could go outside without wearing a fucking face mask. (laughs) 
And trust me, this isn't about who's right and wrong or some political bullshit. But I personally feel more demoralized and depressed now, forced at home, while the rest, or at least most of the world, is completely shut down than I did in actual prison. I feel more demoralized and more depressed now than when I was in fucking prison. That tells you something. And mentally, I'm pretty fucking strong. So just imagine all of those people in this world that aren't so mentally strong and what they're dealing with right now. Now you add on top of that that they can't pay their bills, they can't put food on their table, they're relying on the government who isn't doing jack shit at this point. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people feel like the Amplified Band. My point is this, though. People in general, after two fucking months of stressing out about their health, their loved ones, and how they're going to feed their families, how they're going to pay those bills, all while the media is scaring the fucking shit out of them with death tolls as if they're achieving points to get to the next level of a video game, people are fed up. People are demoralized. People are depressed. And the last thing anybody wants to do is watch a show that has been complete shit for 10 years. That's the truth. I'm the only one that's going to tell you that truth. Nobody else wants to talk about this subject. Everybody wants to dance around it. Not the Amplified Man. Not the Amplified Man. Not the Amplified Man. What? Not the Amplified Man. I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm not at all surprised it came in at a 1.82 this week. And again, this is all starts with the old man's lack of care for what the fuck he's doing or not doing with that company. And we're going to discuss that in just a couple of minutes. Trust me. Before I get into that, I got another thing to get amplified about, if I may. And that is to Joey Ryan. Joey Ryan, this independent wrestler turned TNA Impact Wrestling superstar. Do you call him a superstar? I don't know what the fuck you want to call him. I actually don't mind the guy behind the character. You know, you hear a lot of his interviews. He seems like an okay dude, but man, does he say some outrageous shit. Joey Ryan posted a video of Vader being stiff, or a gif, a jif, whatever the fuck these kids call it, of Vader being stiff in the ring with some jabroni jobber. And Joey Ryan, the self-proclaimed dick wrestler, whatever the fuck that means, made reference to the bully culture in wrestling. Joey, Joey Ryan's exact quote was, Give me Kenny Omega making his enhancement talent look credible and a threat over Vader taking liberties on a guy just trying to get a job. End quote. And below his statement was the video of Vader being stiff with a jobber Johnston. Or at least that's what it looked like because Vader was so fucking good at his job. Something 90% of wrestlers today can't comprehend. As long as you can graduate from the school of gymnastics or can flip someone with your penis, you're good to go. The actual jobber in the video with Vader actually saw this video and responded to Joey Ryan and said, and I quote, For the record... I'm the jobber in this clip. This was my second time working with Vader back then. And believe it or not, he never hurt me. In this case, I didn't go down because going down too early could hurt worse later. I've worked much stiffer guys than Vader. He was actually cool. End quote. So first of all, know what you're fucking talking about, Joey Ryan. Vader was just damn good at what he was doing. Was Vader stiff? Absolutely. A million guys can tell you that, but he was damn good at his job. You pick the clip where a dude in that clip, the dude that was receiving the punches said, dude was fine. He was cool. I didn't get hurt at all. Good job, Joey Ryan. Bring up a dude that is no longer with us and try to talk that shit that he's stiff. Jim Cornette commented in defense of Vader. Of course, Corny used to manage him. So Corny wrote, and again, this is Jim Cornette, morning thoughts on dick boy. Number one, a grown man using the term bully culture is a pussy. Number two, he better be glad wrestling's changed or his ass wouldn't be allowed in it. Number three, there is evolving and then there is devolving. Number four, Joey Ryan is an unsufferable whiny douche and needs his pussy powdered. (laughs) Jim Cornette's the fuck. Man, we may have had our differences and I'm sure we will 
going forward. I don't agree with everything the dude says, but Jim Cornette is an absolute fucking legend, dude. He, he truly is. And again, I've had my own issues with him, but fucking A, dude. <laughs> he blew Joey Ryan up in a fucking matter of one paragraph. It looks like Joey Ryan has deleted the original social media post. When I went to dig for more research, at least, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't presented to me. So it looks like Joey Ryan knows that he did some wrong here, especially after the jobber in the clip said he wasn't being stiff with me. So that goes to tell you, uh, it's just, it's something that should have never been uh, put up in the first place. So I think deleting that is probably best for everybody involved, more specifically Joey Ryan. My question is, for Joey Ryan, why Vader? Why would you pick on Vader, man? Why would that come across you and that's where you wanted to call him a bully, right? You're glad the bully culture is over with in pro wrestling. And you show a little video gif of Vader. Why? There's people that are alive today. You didn't have to bring up somebody that's no longer with us. You could have brought up JBL. You could have brought up Bob Holly. You could have brought up Brock Lesnar. But is it because you know they would have fought back because they're alive today? What about Nia Jax? Joey Ryan. Nia Jax is the bully of all bullies when it comes to the female division in WWE. We've seen her eliminate ten fucking females, three dudes, and she's not even done yet. She's she probably just injured Kyrie Sane last Monday. Why not show a gif of Nia Jax, Joey Ryan? And say how sad it is that the bully culture is still around. How's that, Joey Ryan? If you need to call out a bully culture. Why would you choose Vader? A dude who, who is beloved by so many because he was so damn good. And he brought in generations of pro wrestling fans and wrestlers today that watched Vader and said, This dude's awesome. I want to do this. And now that he's no longer with us, you're going to talk that shit about Vader, but you won't talk that shit about a JBL or a Bob Holly or a Brock Lesnar or a Nia fucking Jax when the whole wrestling world, the whole wrestling world's talking about Nia Jax and how careless and reckless she is. That's, that's the real bully right now in pro wrestling, Joey Ryan. But no, you don't want to touch on that. You don't want to step on anybody's toes that's alive. You picked out Vader. So I'll be, I'll be one voice, just one of many in the pro wrestling world, and I can speak for myself and so many others, especially my amp unit. Don't talk that shit about Van Vader. Am I understood? Vader was a top dog for a reason. He was that damn good. He doesn't need you to tell him what he should have done, or what he's done wrong, or to be lighter in the ring. Be softer. And then after the match, we'll do some psychiatry, right? His opponent will lay on the couch and he'll listen to their thoughts, feelings, and emotions. We don't need that shit. If that's how you're going to portray the light of Vader, then leave his name out of your fucking mouth. Vader has respect put on his name for reasons that clearly you will never know anything about, sadly. Vader has respect put on his name while you're flipping people around in suplexes via your penis. You wish you had Vader's respect. So I'll double down on what Corny said. Leave Vader's name out of your fucking mouth. It'll do everybody... Much better in the long run. Nobody more than you, Joey Ryan. Thank you very much. Now let's get on to the main topic, and that is Vince and Kenny McMahon in the WWE going to shit more than ever. We've heard the rumblings for a while now that Vince McMahon is ready to tap out. But now, with all of these allegations, lawsuits, and disputes pending and arising for Vince and Kenny McMahon, those talks have more than heated up in recent weeks. In fact, those talks are now boiling in the danger zone for the old man. To the point that the legendary Dutch Mantel, younger fans may know him as Zeb Coulter, when he was with Jack Swagger in WWE, and the whole We the People shtick, but us old school fans know him as Dutch Mantel. 
And believe you me, Dutch still knows many people in that company. And according to Dutch, and I quote, Huge news overheard directly out of WWE Stanford that a deal is being negotiated to sell WWE and the network to ESPN and Fox by as early as mid-May, end quote. A lot to digest there, but Dutch Mantel has a lot of contacts in corporate WWE in Stanford, Connecticut. He's hearing what we've all been hearing for a while now, that Vince McMahon, and he said this, just like Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, they didn't hide the fact that they're looking at options to sell. They never hid that fact. Every time they were asked, they were truthful. We're absolutely listening to offers. So we've known for a while that Vince is up for selling, but now with all of these disputes and legal allegations and lawsuits coming up, now it looks like more than ever, Vince is ready to tap out. And you have Dutch Mantel saying that he's hearing directly from corporate that by mid-May, you could be hearing that WWE is being sold. And he's talking ESPN and Fox. Does this mean one of them? Is this going to mean both? Are going to have a stake in it? We don't fucking know. We heard Disney, but Disney is owned by ABC, ESPN, or the other way around. Either way, ABC, ESPN, and Disney are all in cahoots together. They're all owned by the same motherfuckers. So basically, it would be like Disney is owning WWE, if indeed ESPN gets it. But I wouldn't doubt that Fox has their hands in the cookie jar. But that's what we're hearing now from Dutch. And, and to be honest, guys, we've seen the writing on the wall for a very long time. What Dutch is hearing just puts an exclamation point on it all. The cherry on top. We've all seen how bad, how downright tragic this product has been for the last 10 years. They somehow found a way to turn viewers away in droves. This product that, that made us all come together in love over the decades... WWE, within the last decade, has found a way somehow to turn people away in masses, in droves. Look at the statistics. Merchandise down lower than it's ever been. Attendance before this Wabaka hit was so bad that Vince had to cancel live events. No more live events. Vince had to cancel it. Nobody was showing up. It wasn't even just half the arena was full. No, it was like a quarter of it. Ratings, please, we were about to hit the ones before this Wabaka even hit the globe. We were headed, the trajectory was headed to one point sem odds. Look at the old man this past Friday. He aged 20 years in the past five years. The dude is ready to tap out and that's exactly what should happen. I mean, look at Vince McMahon. He can't take it anymore. <laughs> It pains me to say that because I remember the genius that once was. If not for Vince McMahon's decision making back in the 80s and even 90s, man, a lot of us wouldn't still be here today. We have to give the credit where it's due. But if you're going to give him that much credit and call him a genius back in the day, then we have to also put him as the number one blame for why this shit sucks today. This was inevitable. If you make enough bad decisions, eventually you could have just as many bad outcomes. We learn from a young age that if you make enough bad decisions, eventually you're going to be fucked. If you're a teen making bad choices, you're grounded. If you're an adult making bad choices, you could go to prison. If you're a parent making poor choices, you may not be able to feed your kids. If you're a business making poor decisions, you could go bankrupt. There's always a yang to the ying, and the old man in Stanford, Connecticut is not immune to this philosophy. In fact, even through the decades of McMahon playing and probably even believing that he truly is God, he is now paying the price for years of poor decision making and terrible choices made. But let's put aside the tragedy of a product that the old man has been putting on our TVs for the better part of the last 10 years, but let's focus on the business side of things. Where Kennedy McMahon is currently in lawsuits with his own WWE board of directors. This has been going on since April of this year. 
And while that's been going on, just recently he was also hit with more lawsuits from the XFL. That's right, the now defunct twice over XFL. And you can blame the Wabaka for that, by the way. But the truth is, guys, if you pull your head out of your ass and you realize who you're dealing with, which is Vincent Kennedy McMahon, you would have realized that this dude was eventually going to run XFL into the ground within a matter of years anyway. This thing was doomed to fail from the beginning because of who is running the ship. Don't believe me? Look at one of the lawsuits. So Vince McMahon right now, it is actually from one, the, not one, the commissioner of the XFL, Oliver Luck, is suing Vince McMahon. You're telling me that you are that far off the page with your own commissioner, Vince? You're telling me that your relationship with your own commissioner of the XFL was that strained? That this dude is suing you? You didn't have the type of relationship where he saw where we were at right now in the world, business-wise, what needed to be done, and you weren't going to take care of that dude? There was that lack of transparency, there was that lack of care in the relationship, that immediately after the XFL went defunct, this dude is suing you. Yeah. Pretty fucking pathetic if you ask me. And that's why I say the XFL was doomed for failure from the beginning. Sure, people might have liked it a lot more than the original XFL. There was a lot of hope into it I was hearing. The games actually weren't that bad, BC. You're forgetting who is running this. And you just saw it right off the bat. Their own commissioner. There was never a relationship there. You have to build that, man. So you have WWE's own board of directors suing Vince McMahon. You have the XFL suing Vince McMahon. As if all that wasn't enough, McMahon in the WWE has just been hit with a class action lawsuit on behalf of WWE shareholders now. And believe me when I say there are some huge players in this fight to take down McMahon in the legal world. The Gross Law Firm the Levi and Kroniski firm, the Glancy, Prongay, and Murray law firm, among others, there's a lot of credible law firms that are set to go to war with Vince McMahon. And it's not just for one or two reasons, but rather a multitude of blunders in decision-making for the 70-plus-year-old man from Stanford, Connecticut. Some of the biggest unsettling issues for shareholders is that McMahon and top-ranked officials within the company failed to disclose information regarding the rising tensions between the company and Saudi Arabia. You guys remember in 2019 when the superstars were set to depart Saudi Arabia after Crown Jewel and the Jets somehow had one issue after another until the superstars were finally told they weren't going anywhere that night. The whole hostage storyline, where even the superstars were speaking out and the company told them not to do such because they just felt something was just not right. Yeah, I remember that too. McMahon said there was no truth whatsoever as it pertains to tensions between the two parties. But looks like there was. (laughs) Looks like there was much more to the story. We just had to look beyond the lies. That Vince McMahon was spewing. As stocks continued to decline after each financial quarter, McMahon's lies became bolder and more frequent. All the while, McMahon and top company officials were cashing out their stock millions at a time. Guys, all of this, if it sounds shady as fuck, the lies, the deceit, the fabrications... The false reporting, all that McMahon and WWE top officials were doing, if it sounds like that, it's because it's been going on for years. We've been seeing on our TVs a shitty product, but over the last couple of years, we've been hearing the rumblings of shitty business. By Vince McMahon. And now it's all coming to light. It's all coming to the surface. All of the bullshit that Vince McMahon was giving his shareholders and his his board members and fans alike. All of that bullshit is now coming back to bite him in the ass. The truth is now coming out. 
and hovering over all of those lies. That's why I said at the top of this podcast, and I'll reiterate, this is one hole that Vince McMahon has dug that he just is not going to be able to get out of. Dutch Mantel is hearing directly from corporate that within the next month you could hear about a new ownership of WWE. Well, I've been saying that for months now. I've been saying it's any week. It's happening, guys. It's happening a lot faster than you believe, whether it is in a month or two or whether it's at the end of the year. Maybe next year, but it's inevitable. And it's coming much sooner rather than later. Vince McMahon, you could tell just by the look on his face Friday, his actions, his demeanor. He looked like he just didn't give a fuck anymore. (laughs) And when you have that many lawsuits coming at you, when you know that you are fucked, he probably doesn't care anymore. He knows it is a sinking ship. That sucks for all of us fans and or journalists or analysts or if you cover pro wrestling and more specifically WWE because I don't know what that says about the actual on-air product. When everything is unraveling behind the scenes, what the fuck can they possibly produce for our TVs <laughs> and on those shows? What are they possibly going to produce? Uh, could it possibly get even more worse than what we've been seeing the past five to ten years? Sadly, the answer is yes. Until either USA or Fox pulls the plug on shit, or ESPN and or Fox buys the shit, meaning the entire company. That's the only way this can be solved. The old man is done. He either taps the fuck out, or these lawsuits and these companies, these shareholders, these board of directors... They give him the knockout punch. So either you tap out or you're going to get knocked the fuck out. That's McMahon's options. There is just way too many lawsuits. McMahon doesn't have enough lawyers. I bet you right now, and that's not even a joke, guys. I know I say that. You're probably thinking, oh, McMahon's worth billions. He has plenty of lawyers. Trust me, he is worth billions, and he does have a lot of lawyers. He doesn't have this many. Do you guys know how many lawyers it actually takes to take on one lawsuit the size of this nature? It takes a lot. It's not just one lawyer. A lot of people think it's just one lawyer per case. When you're a giant-sized company and you need all the facts and you're taking on big law firms like they're taking on, guys, it could take up to 20 lawyers for one big case. Trust me, I've done my research. Now you're talking about probably what's going to, when it's all said and done, because this isn't, this is just the beginning. I assure you, more and more lawsuits are going to be filed because now this is a class action suit. And that's separate from the XFL lawsuit. And that's also separate from the original uh, board of directors lawsuit. I know, hard to keep track, right guys? You're probably going to see over a dozen separate lawsuits when it's all said and done. And if each one needs about 10, 15, 20 lawyers... Vince McMahon right now and his lawyers are probably looking to outsource to other lawyers to bring them in. This is how bad and severe this has gotten. Uh, Any day now, Vince could just say, I've had it. What are you offering? And we could be hearing about new ownership any day, any week. Um, Definitely within the next few months. This is very serious. I didn't need Dutch Mantel to even break that story. I broke this to you guys last month. Now talks are just picking up even more. It's what we already knew. The writing's been on the wall. And Vince McMahon has been erratic with his decision making from... For years now. (laughs) And if you thought it was just going to get better... Nah, man. The dude's getting weirder and weirder. He's getting more reckless. Uh, He's being as reckless in, in the business world as Nia Jax is in the ring. There's a good correlation for you. But I don't know. But that's that's the news that I got, guys. Vince McMahon is getting hit by all angles and all sides now with more lawsuits. And uh, now we're starting to hear that the the sale of WWE is it's imminent. It's happening much faster than we originally had planned to hear about. And I'm not shocked. This is where this was going. And, and you know what? It, it sucks. It sucks to think about a WWE without Vince, but... Over the past several years, he's gave he's given himself no other choice. He has to be removed from professional wrestling. You know, we like to say the chant, you still got it. When it comes to McMahon running a, a company, he doesn't have it. <laughs> it's sad to say. 
because it, it, for most of us old school fans, we grew up with Vince McMahon. But you know what? Or at least as the top guy, it's it's not benefiting everybody anybody anymore. And in fact, he's actually his lies, his deceit, his fraudulence has actually ruined lives and made a lot of people lose a lot of money. Let's go back to the fans. The product that we see on TV. We've all been suffering the last 5 to 10 years with that shit. And now we know why even more. It's because what's been going on behind the scenes is Vince just trying to be as greedy as possible and not caring what he was producing television-wise. Not caring about where the company was actually going. He was trying to get that instant gratification, that quick payday. The tens of millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia. He was trying to get the multi, the, the billion dollar deal, I should say, from Fox. Hundreds of millions of dollars from the USA Network. He was trying to go for those quick paydays. Who gives a fuck about the company? He wasn't thinking long term anymore. He wasn't thinking about running the company five years from now. He was trying to get as much money as he possibly could up front. And that's why the shareholders, the, 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 the board members... They're calling him out on why he was cashing in millions at a time, selling his stock, even though what he was telling everybody was we see a bright future ahead. Yeah, lies will always come back to get you. Karma's a motherfucker. She'll always get you. That's the 62nd ever BC's Pro Wrestling Amplified Podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, man. Hopefully I gave you enough thought-provoking, amplified content to get you through the next couple of days. And I will talk to you guys again Saturday morning for the SmackDown review and reaction. I assure you, we'll be amplified as ever. Hang in there, guys. We're all getting through this, all right? For now, think, be, live, amplified.